Hey friend, Callan here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna give you three simple tips for mixing perfect low end. We're gonna be talking about mixing low end today, and the only tools you're gonna need for this video are EQ and compression. These three tips are gonna help you dial in a tight and punchy low end that is gonna support the rest of your track. Before we dive in though, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF guide that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it using the link in the video description. Now let's dive in here and take a look at low end. I'm gonna start by showing you this track here. So I'm gonna hit play, you can hear the finished mix for this song, and then I'm gonna solo up just the drums and bass. Those are our prime low end elements, and then we're gonna dive into the three tips here. Excuse me, so let me hit play, you can hear the final mix for this track. You can hear our low end is big, it's punchy, it's got some nice bloom and breath to it. That's what we wanna accomplish with these three tips here today. So tip number one for mixing perfect low end is utilizing a high pass filter. There's a lot of stuff going around about high pass filters and filters in general that you shouldn't use high pass filters because you're gonna ruin your low end, you're gonna remove the sub from your track, you're gonna get rid of any, any weight it could have. That's just not true. High pass filters help you clean up the bottom end and focus your low end energy so you're using as much of the fundamental as possible and you're using the headroom in your track uh, respectfully, right? We're not running it over with a bunch of sub area that we don't need and then trying to pile stuff on top of it that's just running up our track. We're focusing our bottom end on the fundamental and that's how we get the most out of our low end. So looking at the kick drum here, the first EQ I'm running on it is I'm using a high pass filter here right at the top. Now running a high pass filter on a kick drum at 40 hertz seems kind of crazy, right? We want our, our kick drum to have a lot of bottom end and a lot of body, so why would we roll off the sub area? Let me hit play and I want you to notice where the fundamental is on this kick drum. So no high pass filter and then I'll kick it in. So a couple things happen when I kick in the high pass filter. We've got it set at 37.2 Hertz using a 12 dB per octave slope here. And you can see it's kind of echoing the curve, the natural curve of the bottom end on our kick drum. Our fundamental on our kick drum sitting here between 60 and 80 Hertz. I wanna emphasize that area on the kick drum. I don't want all this sub area to take over everything and use up all the headroom that we have for our drums. I want it to be mainly the fundamental on the kick drum. So when we click in this high pass filter, we roll off just enough of that sub area, just enough of that woofiness and that heaviness to make room for the fundamental, that 60, that 70, that 80, to shine through in our kick drum. And I want you to notice when I click in the high pass filter, suddenly our kick drum feels tighter and it feels punchier. Take a listen without the high pass and then with it. We 
we tighten up the sound of our low end overall and focus in on the fundamental of the kick drum that gives us that punchiness, it gives us that tightness, and it gives us that presence and bloom in the bottom end because we get rid of all that heaviness and that woofiness and that kind of low end ringing that you get from that kind of 30, 40 hertz and below. Let's move on now. Let's do the same thing here. I'm going to click everything back on on our kick drum here. And let's do the same thing on our bass guitar here. So we're going to move over and let's solo up our bass guitar. Here's what our bass guitar sounds like by itself. So I clicked our high pass on and off there, and you can see there's some energy coming in quite a bit below where I have the high pass filter. I've rolled it up to about 70 hertz, which can seem surprising on things like bass guitar, things like kick drum, rolling a high pass up this high. But again, we wanna focus around the fundamental, and the fundamental on our bass guitar is sitting around that 70, 80 hertz area on this track. So take a listen one more time. Listen to how our bottom end changes when I click in this high pass filter. Without the high pass filter, our low end on the bass guitar feels messy, it feels all over the place, it feels unorganized. When I click in the high pass at about 70 hertz here, it gets rid of this low frequency that we have that comes in and out. It gets rid of the unevenness and it gets rid of the messiness on our bass guitar. It cleans up the bottom end overall and again focuses our low end energy around the fundamental. So without the high pass, our bottom end feels like it's shifting and moving all over the place. Every note he hits emphasizes a different frequency range and our bass guitar goes up and down and up and down in the bottom end. We click in the high pass filter and it rolls off this heaviness on the bottom end and tightens our sound. So every note he hits gives us the same amount of energy, right? We're not jumping down to 40 hertz and then jumping up to 100 hertz and then jumping back down to 70. We've rolled off that heaviness, so everything's focused and it feels more balanced with just a high pass filter there. So that's tip number one, is utilizing our high pass filter to clean up our bottom end and focus our low end energy. So one more time, let's take a listen here to our drums and our bass guitar. Okay, tip number two is using compression to even out your source of bottom end. So again, we'll look at our kick drum here first. I'm gonna solo up our kick drum and just open up the compressor. I want you to take a look at what's going on here on our compressor. So we're doing about eight, eight and a half dB reduction here on our kick drum. That seems like a lot, especially with a bottom end source. It feels like sometimes when you go too heavy with compression, you lose all that bottom end, you lose all that bloom, and you lose all that beauty that you're getting from the original natural source. But we need this compression to even out our bottom end overall. If we don't compress the source and if we don't compress it this much, we still have that chance that our bottom end is gonna move all over the place, it's gonna come in on some hits, it's gonna come out on some other hits. With something like kick drum especially, the drummer's not hitting the kick drum, he's not striking it at the same force every time. So our bottom end comes in at different times. It comes in mostly when he hits the kick drum softer. The softer he hits the kick drum, the more bottom end he gets or the more bottom end we get out of it. When he hits it really hard, we get more top end and we lose a little bit of that bottom end because of how hard he's striking the kick drum. So we wanna use our compressor to even out our kick drum overall 
among all of these different hits. So no matter if he's hitting it really hard or if he's hitting it really soft, we're still gonna get the same amount of energy out of our kick drum overall. That's why I'm pushing it so hard into this compressor. Now our settings help to maintain attack and to maintain energy and sound overall in our kick drum. So it feels natural sounding even though we're emphasizing some attack elements in our kick drum. So 30 millisecond attack and a 70 millisecond release. Make sure that we leave enough time on the front end after he hits the kick drum that that initial transient pops through and we get that attack element and then our release, make sure we let go before our next hit comes in. Your release is how you can tighten up your kick drum overall. So I've got it set so that when he hits the kick drum, it lets go before our next hit. So we're not squashing the next hit more than we want to, right? Because then we're gonna lose bottom end overall. So take a listen one more time and I'll AB our compressor here. So without it, and then I'll kick it in. Take a listen to how our kick drum tone changes. So you can hear what I was just talking about here. When he hits those doubles, pay attention without the compression, how you get the bottom end bloom on that second hit, but not so much on that first hit. And then when I kick in the pre com compressor here, although we lose some bottom end overall, don't worry, we're gonna get it back here in a second, everything feels more even and we get the same amount of energy and frequency from every hit on the kick drum. So without and then with. So the energy on our kick drum feels more even and it feels more consistent with our compressor in. Let's go over, let's take a look at the same principles here on our bass guitar. So we'll start by soloing up our bass guitar and I'll open up the compressor. You can see what's going on on our bass guitar. You can see I'm putting a ton of compression here on bass guitar. And this is something I talked about in a recent live stream I did mixing through a song. Lately, I've been layering on a lot more compression on bass guitar than I used to. I used to sit around the three to five dB reduction on bass guitar. Lately, I'm cooking it up to about seven dB reduction on bass guitar, especially on the bigger notes. And for me, this saves me from pulling in something like a multi-band compressor to just even out the bottom end. I can even out the bass guitar overall and apply the same principles that we applied to the kick drum to get our low end and our bass guitar sitting consistent overall. So take a listen here without our compressor and then with. You can hear without our compressor, our bass guitar feels uneven, it doesn't feel consistent and we're not getting the energy we want out of it and especially out of the bottom end overall. So take a listen without compression and then with. When we kick in our compressor and we layer on this 70 dB of, of gain reduction on our bass guitar, we make sure that every note he hits on this bass guitar is giving us the same amount of energy. Layering on compression like this on our kick drum, on our bass guitar, make sure we can park these sources right where we want them and our bottom end's not gonna move and it's not gonna change throughout our track. So we know where we're sitting with our low end, 
we know where we're standing with it, and we don't have to worry about it from there on out. We don't have to worry about it changing, we don't have to worry about it moving, and we don't worry have to worry about the volume fluctuating on it. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, our last tip, tip number three, for mixing perfect low end is boosting with EQ post compression. So after you use your compressor to even out your source, whether it's your kick drum or your bass guitar, then you use your EQ to boost your bottom end. So we're not boosting bottom end into it. We're not boosting bottom end right away. We're not carving up our source. We're doing our first EQ, rolling off that little bit of bottom end. Then we're doing our compression to even out our source and park it where we want it. And then we go in after at the end of the chain and we bring up that bottom end. Since it's even, it's gonna bloom, right? It's not gonna show up at some point and then disappear at others. So let's take a look at our kick drum again to start here. And at the end of the chain here, I've got Justin EQ doing one boost here, 5 dB at 80 Hertz. So take a listen without it and then with. Now our kick drum has weight, it has punch, and it feels massive inside our track. Take a listen, we'll throw it back inside our track here. Take a listen to our kick drum without this boost and then with it. Pretty much disappears without that boost in there. By doing this at the end of the chain, we, we make sure we're boosting consistent and even bottom end. If I were to do this at the beginning of the chain, you know, pre our first EQ, pre our high pass, pre our compression, we're gonna be boosting a low end that is moving all over the place. Sometimes we have 40 hertz, sometimes we have more 80 hertz, sometimes we have more 120 hertz. And I, doing a boost here at 80 hertz isn't gonna boost something even, it's not gonna get me something consistent. It's gonna bring up a little bit of 40, a little bit of 120, a little bit of 80 when it shows up there. By doing it post compression, we make sure we're boosting a bottom end that is evened out and that is already consistent. So when we pull up 80 hertz, we know we're pulling up the same amount of 80 hertz on each of these hits here because our kick drum is consistent. Same principles here that we are gonna apply to our bass guitar now. At the end of the chain here, one EQ doing one move. Five, almost 60 B at 80 Hertz. So take a listen without this boost and then with. You can hear our bottom end is parked in one place here on the bass guitar. Every note is giving us pretty much the same amount of bottom end. It's this nice low end pulse that we can put exactly where we want it volume wise inside this track. And that is because we did it at the end of our chain. We've layered on that compression to even out our bass guitar and get it sitting where we want it volume wise. So when we boost that bottom end, it is consistent and it is powerful. Let's throw both of these back together here our drums and our bass guitar, and then I will throw them back inside the mix here. Here's our drums and our bass guitar.
So let's review here. Three tips for mixing perfect low end. Tip number one is using your high pass filters to clean up your bottom end and focus in on the fundamental of your sound source, whether it's the kick drum or the bass guitar. Tip number two is using compression to get consistent sound out of your source. So compressing our kick drum to make sure we're getting the same energy out of each of our hits and compressing our bass guitar to make sure we hear each note of the bass guitar at the same level. And then tip number three is boosting low end post compression at the end of our chain so we're bringing up a consistent and powerful bottom end. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it is a free PDF guide that will help you get more professional mixes in less time. You can get access to that completely free by clicking the link below in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.